Let's talk about sewing machines, break down some of the different types, and explain what they do. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. And this is a question I get a lot. So I wanted to take time to explain some of the common varieties of sewing machines, what they do, and explain how you as a maker might use them. Disclaimer, I am by no means an expert, and this list and information is not all-inclusive. So continue to keep doing your research if you are planning to buy one. And towards the end of this video, I'll be answering the question, what sewing machine should I buy as a beginner? Because this one is not as easy as it seems to answer. First, we'll start with the regular sewing machine. And even this one has many different options. There's the home sewing machine, also known as a regular domestic sewing machine. We're talking single needle. Some models just do basic stitches, others do decorative and fancier stitches. Prices are all over the place from under $100 to tens of thousands. A straight stitch or lock stitch is the most common, with thread that runs on top and on the bottom from the bobbin, interlocking in the middle. There are also heavy duty and industrial machines for more commercial sewing or working with heavy and bulky fabrics. A lot of you do ask about working with bulky and thick fabrics. Many regular sewing machines, even expensive ones, will struggle with these types of projects. Industrial machines typically only perform a straight stitch and tend to be bigger and faster. Additionally, vintage sewing machines are really popular. If you don't need all the modern bells and whistles, these are known as workhorses in the sewing room. Vintage machines offer solid, quality construction, and the lack of computerized parts means they can be repaired. Next is a serger or overlock machine. I have a Brother 1034D serger and use it mainly for finishing raw seam allowances. Sergers are heavily used for knit fabrics like sewing seams on t-shirts. Serger stitches are formed with at least two threads. Some even have five threads and either one or two needles. Sergers use looper threads to create that overcast stitch, which is how it differs from a standard sewing machine. There is a knife blade on sergers that both trim the seam allowance and finish the ends. Sergers do use a lot of thread and they have spots to hold four or more cones of thread at the back of the machine. For the most part, sergers only stitch the edge of fabric, so keep that in mind. I have gotten around this by doing a flat lock stitch and running a folded piece of fabric through the serger, but had to be very careful not to accidentally cut the material. Note, you cannot use a serger to do regular sewing. So if you're a beginner and don't specifically need a serger, go for a regular domestic sewing machine. Some sewing machines do have stitches that mimic the look of serged seams, but they're still not exactly the same. On to cover stitch machines. These can be confused with sergers because they kind of look alike. One of the main reasons you'd buy a cover stitch machine is to finish hems on garments, particularly knits. Cover stitch machines typically use one, two, or three needles and at least three different threads running through. Single needle cover stitching produces a chain stitch, which looks like a regular straight stitch on top but a chain on the bottom thanks to the looper thread which allows the seam to stretch. Double needle cover stitching has a twin stitching on top and a network of thread on the back also allowing stretch. Many models also offer triple cover stitching. These machines do not have a knife, so you can cover stitch anywhere on a piece of fabric. They also come in handy for attaching trim. There are some combo machines that multitask like a serger cover stitch duo, but I personally prefer single task machines because you don't have the hassle of switching out components and changing all the settings. And of course, there's the embroider machine. I personally own the Brother PE800 and I feel like it's a good mid-range priced machine with a five by seven inch hoop size. So how does an embroider machine actually work? It is a computerized machine specifically engineered to stitch out digitized designs. Models usually come pre-programmed with built-in designs, but incorporating external designs requires users to hook up the machine to a computer or plugging in a USB flash drive. There are single needle machines like the one I have and commercial machines with multiple needles. With single needle embroidery machines, the thread must be changed out whenever you want to switch colors in the design. An embroidery only machine does not do regular sewing. It will only stitch out computerized designs. You can't manually manipulate this machine. They also cannot stitch out regular image files. The design must be digitized specifically for embroidery machines. Different brands all have their own file type that must be used. For instance, Brother is .pes. 
You can purchase digitized designs or create them yourself if you have embroidery software. There are sewing slash embroidery combo machines, but they do require you to switch out components and settings to use each function. Again, this is why I don't go for these because I want the machine to be ready to go at all times. Now remember, this is still very surface level for sewing machines. If you really want to dive into the deep end, I encourage you to check out one of the many videos I have here on the sewing report all about sewing machines, and as promised, what about sewing machine recommendations? Buying a sewing machine is a very personal decision, and it's really hard to recommend just one for everyone because all of you have different needs and different preferences. For instance, I would recommend a different machine for someone who is into quilting than someone who just wanted to sew clothes. When you're just starting out, you don't know what to look for in terms of sewing machine features, and your sewing interests do tend to change over time. If you have an interest in sewing but not much experience, I would tell you don't drop a ton of money on a sewing machine. I would say maybe get a sewing machine new or used, under $300, see how much you use it, what you end up sewing, and if you actually like sewing. You can always upgrade later on and you'll be better equipped as a consumer if you know what you want. I've been featuring the Brother CS7000i here because it's on the more affordable side, it's very versatile, and Brother machines tend to be widely available here in the US. If you're able to try out someone else's machine or go to a sewing machine dealer, test a few out. I did this myself pre-COVID by going to a few sewing events that had workshops and I was able to use all different types of models of different machines from low end to high end and that really helped me figure out what I liked in a sewing machine. We are all different and it's only natural for us to love or even hate certain brands. The good news for us is that we have lots of options. And because I do tend to get this a lot, I have to kindly ask that you not email or DM me on Instagram asking for one-on-one -on -one help. Please keep in mind that I make these videos for free in order to contribute to the sewing community as a whole, but unfortunately I'm not able to dedicate the time to personalized attention, plus I'm not an actual sewing machine tech, so I'm really not comfortable helping you guys troubleshoot specific issues with sewing machines, so thank you in advance. Down below in the comments, I'd love to hear your sewing machine recommendations for beginners and why. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you go ahead and hit that like button, and I'd love for you to join me here on The Sewing Report by subscribing to this channel. I am Jen, and remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.